Hey, it's Ranger Terry again today, and I'm here to talk about how to take a day hike safely. Before I go any further, I do want to be clear, this is not a backpacking basics video. This is about taking a day hike. So how do we define day hike? Well, it's any hike where you leave and return on the same day without any expectation of camping overnight. So let's get ready to hike. Well, I sure look like I'm ready to go. Well, let's take a closer look at what it took to get me to this point. It's important to plan your hike because not all trails are made equally. You're going to take a short, easy hike, maybe down on the coast, or maybe a longer, extended, strenuous hike, maybe up in the mountains. Are you physically ready for your hike? If you're going on an easy hike, maybe you don't have to train very much. But if you're going up in the mountains, doing a strenuous hike, training might be important. Being ready includes being physically fit, as well as having the proper equipment for the hike that you choose to do. South Carolina State Parks offer plenty of short day hike opportunities. Might be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, and travel as far as one to two miles. For a hike like that, I can probably get away with my tennis shoes. I might also choose to use my hiking boots. Some of the equipment I also might bring, my binoculars. Because you just never know when something cool is going to come up. In my backpack, I'm always going to have water. One to two pints and drinking that at a rate of about a pint an hour. And if you, like me, have any medical conditions, make sure you've always got your equipment with you. You never know when an emergency might arise. Short day hikes won't take too much planning. So let's talk a little bit more about our longer day hikes. For a longer day hike, more planning needs to be done. What trail or trails are you gonna hike? How long do you expect to be out? How many miles do you wanna do? What's the terrain like on the trails that you're gonna hike? All these are questions that you need to consider before you go on an extended day hike. Answering these simple questions will help you select the appropriate map for your hike, pack the right amount of food and water, and bring the right gear. Take these maps for example. Each of these trail maps has a color-coded key coordinated with the blazings on the trails. The longer and more complicated the trail system, the more important it is to have a higher quality map. So now let's talk about some equipment and gear we need to pack for our extended day hike. <laughs> Alright, so I've got all the contents of my day pack laid out on the table and we'll look at them in sort of groupings. So in the clothing grouping, I've got an extra long sleeve shirt. So extra layer of warmth there. It's a lightweight material. Uh, it can dry quickly if it gets wet, but it also packs up nice and small. Doesn't weigh a whole lot. So that's handy for a, a shirt. And then I've got my hiking shorts, which double as hiking pants in case it does get a little colder. And also they're made out of a water resistant material. So if it's light rain, those will keep my legs dry. Now, if it's a heavier rain, I've got my actual rain suit, so I've got pants and a jacket. Uh, that would also double as an extra layer in an emergency situation if I was stuck overnight. Uh, the sun went down, it got colder, I can put that on and layer up. Now, food and water on the trail. <clears throat> my backpack has three liters of internal uh, water built in and then snacks that I can take with me, uh, jerky, granola bars, maybe you like fruit, dried fruit, nuts, whatever, whatever you prefer in the snack department. But you'll also see that I've got an extra bottle of water. And for that, I would use hydration packets so that uh, if I needed some electrolytes, I can have that separate from my main uh, water. And then I carry an extra one just in case somebody else needs one. Now, if there were a first aid emergency, on the trip, I've got a good first aid kit, all set, ready to go in a waterproof uh, baggie so that nothing gets wet inside and gets ruined. Uh, but 
my own personal uh, first aid emergency, if I needed this, my EpiPen, I carry that separate from my first aid kit. I keep that in the top so that it's readily available, quick access. Now more in the fun department, I've got my binoculars. I keep them on the outside with just a carabiner. So if there's something cool up in the trees, I'm gonna check it out. I don't have to dig through my whole pack to find that. More emergency stuff. I've got my fire starter kit here, box of matches, uh, dryer lint, because dryer lint's a quick fire starter. My pocket knife in case I needed to make some wood shavings. That would be my fire kit. <clears throat> my signal kit. I've got my flashlight. I've got extra batteries in case the batteries in here run out. I need to have an extra set. And then also in the emergency signal kit, I've got my trail whistle because the trail whistle is going to last longer than my voice will. Other emergencies that might pop up on the trail. I've got my toilet paper. I've got a trial to dig a cat hole. If you happen to be in a place that doesn't allow uh, digging, uh, maybe it's a 100% leave no trace ethics in that, in that particular park, then I've also got doggy bags, doggy poo bags, as well as rubber gloves to pick that up and uh, an extra baggie then to uh, double up the um, layering so that it doesn't get messy inside my day pack. And that is the contents of my day pack. All of that fits right inside there. Probably weighs about 20 to 25 pounds. All right, we're ready to go on our extended day hike. But before we leave, we need to make and communicate a hike plan. A hike plan is basically the same thing as a float plan for canoers or kayakers. It tells someone when we were planning on leaving, where we were going, including the trails, who was going with us, and when we plan to return. In some parks, you might also find trail registers at trailheads. In this case, you need to fill out one of those as well. Let's watch Ranger Elliot as he explains how to use a trail register. Uh, so we are in the Mountain Bridge Wilderness Area at Jones Gap State Park. Um, I want to go over how to fill out a hike registration and why it's important. If you look, we have 60 miles of trails in the park. And um, if you do not fill out a hike registration, if you were lost or injured, we would not know where to come look for you. So just take five minutes before you start your hike, pull out one of these registration cards, grab a pencil. We ask that you fill it out, um, you know, 100 percent, put emergency contact on there, what you're driving. So that way, when you leave, when your vehicle's gone, we'll know that you're safe. Um, in the event that your vehicle is still here, uh, we would look at this, find out what trail you're on, and we will come look for you. And it might save your life. Um, I've actually seen it save lives. All right. So you made your hike plan. You communicated it. And now you're at the park. If there's a register there, you've registered. And it's time to go on your hike. Well, make sure you stick to your plan. If you happen to go off your plan, that can lead to issues with rescue personnel and park staff finding you if something goes wrong. So always stay on your designated hike plan. Now, your hike plan is going to be made a lot easier with uh, being able to recognize the appropriate trails. And those are always marked with trail blazes like this one here. On some trails, you might see multiple blazes, and that just means that there's an overlapping in the trail system of those trails. Um, just be aware of that because when the trails change, maybe they split off, you need to make sure that you stay on the right trail for your plan. Sometimes while you're out hiking, you'll come across trails that aren't marked. We call those trails social trails. And those can be a problem for management as well as for hikers. They can lead to confusion, possibly getting lost. Obviously, if you're lost, you might get injured. And then if you're not on a marked trail, uh, if you get injured, it's harder for staff and rescue personnel to find you. So always stay on designated trails and avoid the social trails. Let's listen to Ranger Scott while he talks a little bit about social trails at Table Rock State Park. When you're hiking in the mountains or anywhere on designated trails, make sure you stay on them. Look for blazes, look for signs. Normally you should see the worn path and where other hikers are going. Uh, the problem is there's some social trails like this. You see it's not cleared out. It's steeply downhill. The magnet of this is the water attraction, which you can see fine from here. But when you take that social trail, you not only damage 
uh, the natural area causing erosion problems, but it also may lead you to a spot that's not safe at all. Uh, slippery rocks, fast moving water, drop offs, not safe, and you can either get injured or you may get yourself lost if you keep following off the trail. So what do you do if you do get off trail and you feel like you're getting lost? Well, the first thing is don't panic. Stop where you're at and start thinking about how can I get back to the trail without getting even further lost? And here's how I would do it. Pick where you're at and mark your spot. Take something out of your backpack. Maybe it's an extra piece of clothing and put it where you can easily see it. Then from that point, go in each direction about one to 200 yards. You are likely to find your trail, but if you don't, always come back to where you started from for your search. Chances are you're gonna come back and find your original trail that you were hiking. If you do, don't forget what you left behind. Put your backpack down, go back and get your, your marker, and then go right back to your trail. If you don't find your trail, now's the time to help somebody find you. We can do that by a couple of ways. First, we can build a small fire. This is gonna be a signal fire, so this is not gonna be a huge fire. We want it small enough that when we are found, we can easily put it out, and also so that we can totally control it so no embers fly away and possibly create a wildfire. You'll notice here I've cleared away a wide area for my fire so that I can control it. I've made a pile of kindling and a couple of other little piles of small sticks. This would be big enough to provide a signal fire and uh, provide smoke so that rescuers can see it or maybe smell it. When we were going over our equipment for what we should have in our uh, day pack, we had a signal whistle. And this is when that can possibly come into use. Now there's a couple of ways to use this. Uh, lots of you may remember SOS. And in Morse code, S is dot dot dot, O is dash dash dash. And so SOS would sound something like this. So we could signal by using Morse code SOS or we could simply blow three long whistles. Every few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And that way, as somebody might be hiking by or our search and rescue crews might be looking for us, they'll hear those sounds and those are easily recognizable as distress symbols. As it gets dark, you'd want to take out your flashlight, turn it on, and then use it in a 360 degree uh, circle every few minutes to add that to the possible ways that rescuers will be able to find you. All right, so follow some of these easy guidelines. Stay safe, enjoy your hike, stay on the blaze trail. Know where your trail is going, uh, have a map with you, uh, whether it's electronic or whether it's uh, hard copy. Uh, make sure you don't go on the social trails. Those things can lead to danger. Uh, you can get lost easily. Uh, so start out, know where you're going, come back, uh, get there safe. The last thing to do is to remember to finish up your hike plan. That last step was to call your emergency contact and let them know that you got back from your hike and you're safe and on your way home. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and that you feel better prepared for your next South Carolina State Park Trail adventure. I'm Ranger Terry, and I'll see you in the parks.